Now we're looking at Super Audio Cart from Impact Soundworks, and this is a really interesting synthesizer. Well, possibly a rompler with a synth engine, but either way, it's a great instrument. And the reason it's called Super Audio Cart is because it samples old games consoles that mostly use cartridges. I'm guessing that's where cart comes from. It actually models eight legendary game systems, and I would say they are legendary. I remember them because I'm old, and I remember them with a, a lot of nostalgia and um, really nice memories. And some of you probably will as well. Now, if you know any of these machines, you'll know that they had really interesting sound chipsets, and they're often mangled and circuit bent and twisted these days to make new instruments. Super Audio Cart gives you a really easy way of accessing these sounds and uh, getting hold of them. And not only that, but altering them and using them in a real instrument that is actually genuinely useful in your productions. So let's take a look at the interface and see what's going on here. As I say, it's based on samples of these machines. And you can see the machine that is being sampled or that you're accessing up in the top left. And you get a little sort of picture. And I'm going to click on that. And you can see C64, for example, is obviously the Commodore 64. And it gives you the shape of that console. And you can see the NES. And you get that really iconic NES shape. And then once you've picked the device that you're uh, using the samples from, then there's a drop-down menu. And this gives you the samples that are available, everything that they've sampled. And it's not just waveforms or noise, but also drum, entire drum kits. So let's say you pick the snares, for example. You'll see that there are not just drop-down menus, but then menus within menus. So you can see drum kit, and then you can see several different drum kits. And some of these are clearly classics, and some of them are more recent styles and genres that have been constructed using the sounds from the snares. Now, once you've picked a sound, in this case, we've landed on a bass sound, you can then use the synth engine to alter that sound completely. Now the synth engine is very simple, but it lends itself very well and complements the waveforms really well. So you've got a simple playback section uh, to change the note length and the sample start, and you can have it in monophonic mode here. So this is sort of a voicing mode for the sampler. And then you've got a pitch area here. So you've got tune, and then you've got a semitone offset, so fine tune essentially. And then you've got a pitch tracking area, You've got a vibrato section down here where you can change the waveforms and the speed. And then you've got a portamento area. Over to the right, you've got a filter, which is a multi-mode filter. So we can change it from low pass to high pass to band pass, and it's resonant as well. So this is very much like a standard filter that you're gonna find in a subtractive synthesizer. There's then an amp section, velocity, sensitivity, pan, volume, and then there's three envelopes, which is really cool because we've got an envelope for pitch, an envelope for the filter, and then a volume envelope. The reason this is cool is because the pitch envelope allows us to really manipulate the samples and get convincing drum sounds or percussion sounds and effects. Now this is all great and it's the sort of thing that you expect to see in any rompler, sampler, or subtractive synthesizer, but the action really starts with Super Audio Cart down towards the bottom. Over to the right, and I'll cover this first because it's sort of more standard, is an arpeggiator. And everything in here that you'd expect to see in an arpeggiator is present, plus a few extra things like a swing control and a loop control. Left of the arpeggiator is the sequencer control or modulation control. I guess it's sort of the cross between a modulation matrix and a sequencer. Uh, but basically you can select any of these five parameters here and switch them on and off individually, by the way, and then control the amount of modulation per step. Now, if you want more steps, you can change this from 8 to 16, for example, and add more modulation in per step. And remember, this is not just global, this is per parameter here. So let's say you want to change the cutoff, you can do that completely independently of changing the control for the pitch. And when you've set everything, as I said before, you can switch these in and out individually as well. And if you want to switch the whole thing off, there's a button at the top to control this sort of arpeggiator modulation matrix stroke sequencer. They're calling it an arpeggiator, but it's so much more than that. And then finally, over towards the left, we've got a mod and pitch wheel, as you'd expect. You can change the amount of pitch bend and also use the mod wheel to modulate various destinations in the synth. 
If we flip the synth over, we've got loads of CV functionality, so pretty much anything in Super Audio Cart can be routed to and from other CV devices in the rack. Now finally, I just want to say what a great job the developers have done of providing presets here. Some of the rack extensions we look at have, you know, a good amount of presets, but not many. Uh, Super Audio Cart really excels here, and we've got loads of different presets. So if you look at effects, we've got sequences, um, we've got polysynths, pads, leads, and bass. And honestly, this gives you a really great idea of what can be achieved with the instrument, and it's a really nice starting point. I found myself wanting to play these patches, and we'll take a listen in the next video to some of these patches, and it gives you a great idea of what this instrument's capable of.